Hey guys, welcome to the Otaku Experience. I'm Israel King. And before this episode starts, I just want to give you a quick heads up that this episode might be a little bit different from normal. I felt that I wanted to try something a little bit different. I've been doing that throughout this series. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, hopefully, you know, unless we get canceled or something like that, hopefully this is still the very beginning stages of this series. So I'm still trying to find my footing and I'm still trying to see what works and what doesn't. So there's a chance uh, a good chance that, you know, by by next week, we're back to the same old, same old. But I wanted to try this and see how it felt for me and how you guys felt about it. So it's a lot more of a unprepared version, I guess you could say. That sounds bad, but I think it really worked out the way my the way I usually do my content on my main channel, the way my brain works and how my reactions are. And it felt a lot more natural um, than a more prepared thing where I have nine pages of notes of all the stories that I go through on a typical week. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode um, and let me know what your thoughts are down there. There's some crazy stuff we talk about this week and um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the episode. Forty seventh Kodansha Manga Award winners are not surprised. I didn't even know that the awards had happened. On May tenth, Kodansha revealed the winners of its forty seventh Kodansha Manga Award. Emerging as the victor in the shonen category was Shangri La Frontier Kos uh, Kusoge Hunter Kamigi Ni Nido Mantosu, a VR game theme title written by. Katarina, who first published the story as a web novel and drawn by Ryosuke Fuji, the weekly shonen magazine title began in 2020 and now has an upcoming anime adaptation and video game. Oh, that's pretty cool. I, I, I have no idea what this is. Um, <laughs> 12 Tankoban volumes have been released as of March 2023. For the Sojo category, the winning title was Mamori Ao's My Girlfriend's Child, which began serialization in Besatsu Friend in 2021, and has won five Tonko Bone volumes as of January this year. The manga, which has teen pregnancy as its theme, previously placed first on the line manga general ranking. Finally, the winner of the general category was Misaki Takamatsu's Skip and Loafer, which has a current airing anime adaptation. The manga, which follows a girl from the countryside as she attends school in Tokyo, begins serialization in afternoon in 2018 and has eight Tankoban volumes as of January 2023. Wow, that's pretty cool. Congrats, Skip and Loafer. I mean, the anime adaptation has seemed amazing. And so... Uh, I haven't had a chance to start it yet. I'm so behind. I, I should not even be filming. I should just text Rob. Hey, no episode. I got to watch anime. You, you expect me to talk about anime if I'm not watching anime? Could you imagine if like, like on Rob's observations, like he was like, yo, I haven't watched a movie in months, but let's talk about it. You know what I mean? Like, it'd be kind of funny. Okay. Seeing Berserk fan art mashup finds guts in Van Gogh's Starry Night. Yo, look at that. Oh, snap. Yeah, that's really nice artwork. Wow, that's really cool. Someone did Mountain Lady cosplay. Oh, snap. Oh, she killed it. It's a nice costume. I mean, she makes the, because usually like anime costumes or cosplays are usually very goofy, but I don't know, maybe like this doesn't look like it's the most expensive thing ever made, but she's like, she's making it work. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Say what you will about me. She's making it work. Sasaki and Miyano wins Pixiv Comics Web Manga Election. Wait, there were two manga awards this past week? What? Uh, Pixiv Comet has revealed that the results of its special 10th anniversary web manga election with show Harusono's Boys Love Mangas, uh, Sasaki and Miyano placing first. Uh, coming in second place was another Boys Love Manga, Minato Tosoji Coin Laundry, written by Yuzutsu. Okay, placing third was Nebukuro's supernatural manga, Wake Ari Shinrei Mansion. The other top 10 anniversary, uh, uh, 30 Sai Akio. Okay. Wow. I mean, if, if, if you've uh, seen my, if you've been watching my channel, my main channel, King Tanic, subscribe. Uh, if you've been watching my main channel for the past year, uh, you would know that Sasuke and Miyano was one of my favorite anime of the year. I think this was a winter release. Um, and 
it's fantastic. It might it it was probably in my top ten anime of last year. Um, yeah, and I, I heard that they did like a, a special, like an OVA that's like gonna be coming out this year, uh, and I'm really excited to see that because I really like the anime. The Los Angeles Chargers release its anime-inspired schedule for 2023 arc. They did it again. No way. No way. I have to look at this. Hang on. No way, bro. <laughs> no way. Whoa. I'm not going to get copyrighted, am I? <laughs> Yo, they turned the Titans into the Teen Titans. No way. Oh, this is awesome. Chargers versus the Raiders. Oh, this is fantastic. Dak loss. Come on. Don't be talking about my boy like that. That's America's team, bro. That's God's team. Don't talk bad about my Cowboys. Rebuild the bear from We, be uh, we Bear Bears. Oh, gosh. Yo, is that your... And I assume it, it keeps going. But they already showed the Cowboys. I don't care anymore. That's amazing. I, I don't know if that song is like copyrighted or anything. If so, you didn't hear any of that. But that was really cool, dude. Oh, man. That's awesome. Uh, more more uh, uh, companies should like capitalize off of that, off of how popular anime is becoming and how popular the anime style is because I think it could really... it it's It's becoming so mainstream in especially like Gen Z. So Gen Z... They did a poll recently, uh, I, and this could be a totally illegitimate poll, uh, but all I saw was the headline that it's around 50% of Gen Z watch anime. And I was like, dude, like, so once the boomers die out and then like it, we can like, like, bro, like in like 20 years, like anime at this rate, unless, unless what uh, the MAPA CEO or co-founder said a few weeks ago with Dongwa, um, if, if that doesn't happen, then Anime could be like one of the mainstream things, like one of the things. And so these companies should really get on it now because it, it it's going to be a huge head start. Crunchyroll adds backflip movie. Oh, snap. I know what I am watching tonight. Crunchyroll has revealed that the addition of backflip the movie and hula fula dance to its anime movie catalog this month. Uh, backflip the movie, a sequel to the 2021. Was it 2021? Bro, I'm so old. I could have swore this came out last year. Men's rim, uh, rhythmic gymnastics theme backflip anime series and hula fula dance, which follows a new hula dancing team at the spa resort Hawaiians, were added to the platform on May 11th. That's awesome. What is hula fula dance? I've never heard of this. It's got a 6.1 on my anime list. That doesn't sound too good. Uh, Natsu Nagi Hiwa, a novice, jumps into the world of hula girl after her sister. That's yeah, a manga, but nobody's read it. <laughs> it looks like it, it went. It's a very short manga, so I assume they finished it. And oh, is this a movie? Oh, it's a movie. I thought this was a series. OK, well, that sucks. I mean, now people can watch it, but I, I probably won't check it out. I watch Backflip, though. Kotaro Lives Alone manga ends in two chapters. Oh, I got to check this out because so Kotaro Lives Alone, if you, if you didn't know, was one of so every anime season. Let me just look it up. So you know what I'm talking about. So every anime season there are anime that drop not seasonally. Like they'll drop in the anime season, but they won't air weekly. All right, so Kotaro Lives Alone, it doesn't say what season it, okay, so it all dropped on March 10th, so it would have been like the spring season. Um, so yeah, uh, look, it, it's got an 8.23 out of 10, which on my anime list is amazing. Um, and I really wanted to check this out. I just did not have the time last year, um, but it's, it looks amazing. So with it ending, I wonder if it's going to get a second season because it seems like it did fairly decent. Um, and then if the manga is as good or even better, I wonder if they'll finish it out. Uh, a manga inspired a live action series. There's a live action series, a Netflix anime series that debuted. Yeah. OK. Wow. OK, I'll, I'll have to get on that. Maybe I'll just read it. Who knows? Who knows what to do? There's so much to watch and so much to read. Kubo will let me be invisible episode seven preview. Wait, it's back. Yes. Yes. Bro, it's been like three months since they've aired an episode. The first new episode since the anime restarted its broadcast uh, from the start in April due to the impact of COVID-19. The series originally aired last season with six episodes in total, and they released some preview images. Uh, 
Did they have no comment? Okay. Anyways, wait. Wait, Baki season two? I, I don't think I knew this. Wait, they're doing a Baki season two? Bro, Baki. Uh, okay, so if you've never seen Baki. <laughs> oh my gosh. Baki's fantastic. Okay. Ah, uh, this animation, bro. Dude, they're so buff. Oh, uh, that's Baki. <laughs> it's so, it's so bizarre. Uh, there's some great scenes. I was going to say, check out the scene, because there's this one scene that got me to check and look into Baki, but I'm not even going to say it because it's so much funnier if you don't know about it and it just surprises you. Um, so just watch Baki. It's on Netflix. The entire first season's out and you'll be prepared for the second season. When's this coming out? Uh, part one is titled The Tale of the Pickle and the Pickle Wars Saga and will be released on July 26th, while part two, titled The Father vs. Son Saga, will be released on August 24th. Do we know how many episodes are in each part? I'm assuming it's going to be 12 and it's going to be like a 24 episode season. Dude. Oh, bro. Event television. We're here, baby. Kyoto Animation Arson Suspect will have the verdict handed down on January 2024th. Oh, I thought it was going to be this year. The arsonist will have his first trial date on September 5th. Okay. So for those of you guys who might be relatively new to the anime sphere and you don't know what's going on. So the Kyoto animation uh, arson attack, the arson fire, um, was terrible. It was almost three years ago. My gosh, I remember making a video about this. It's it's not on the channel anymore because I've uh, I purged all the videos from that time. <laughs> but um, but yeah, oh my gosh, this was such a shock. Let's let's read some of this just just to give you all some context. Uh, the arson attack occurred at Kyoto Animation Studio One building in the Fushimi Ward of Kyoto, Kyoto Prefecture, on Japan, the morning of uh, July eighteenth. 2019, the arson killed 36 people, injured an additional 34, including the suspect, and destroyed most of the materials and computers in Studio One. It is one of the deadliest massacres in Japan since the end of World War II. The deadliest building fire in Japan uh, since 2001, Miyoyo 56 building fire, and the first massacre ever to have occurred at a studio associated with an entertainment company and the in uh, animation industry. The suspect, who did not work for the studio, entered the front door carrying about 40 liters of gasoline and doused the area and several employees before igniting it. After setting himself on fire while lighting the fuel, the suspect attempted to flee, but was apprehended by police about 100 meters from the building. Witnesses stated that they heard him accusing the studio of plagiarism. After awaiting his recovery from life-threatening burns for more than 10 months, the police arrested 42-year-old Shinji Alba on suspicion of murder and other offenses on May 27, 2020 and he was formally indicted on December 16th, 2020. Uh, in addition to condolences and, met and uh, messages to, of supporters from national and international leaders, fans and businesses raised over $3.3 billion in Japan and over uh, $2.3 million internationally, uh, uh, billion dollars, uh, or million dollars internationally to help the studio and its employees recover. As a result of the incident, some works and collaborations by the studio were delayed and several events were suspended or canceled. So. Gosh, I still can't believe that happened. I remember covering that uh, on my channel, just like, just like a rant. I wasn't even a full anime channel yet, but Kyoto Animation is my favorite anime studio. They did anime like Clan Ad. They did anime like I, I believe Chinibio is one they've done. They did like K on, um, obviously uh, Dragon Maid, which which they did a season two in 2021. I think. Gosh, 2021 feels like it was yesterday, but man, it was a while ago. But um. They, they also did, I believe, um, I could be wrong. Did they do a silent voice? One of the reasons why they're my favorite studio is their animation. Another reason is the stories that they decide to tell. They usually go for the stories that I like most, which are the more sad stories, the more, whether they're sad or not, they're, they're usually mainly about the emotion of the story. Um, and, and like pushing that emotion and, and they just feel so human. Like the stories feel so human and you feel so connected to it. Uh, if you know anything about me and my channel, I obviously uh, directed a play. Um, and I adapted and directed a play adaptation of Clan Ad on, and it's on my channel now. You can check it out. It's really bad, but you know, it's a great uh, uh, 
just symbol of my love to the to the studio and and to everything they've done and and uh yeah this studio means so much so when i heard about this when this happened it made me it i i was so sad i was heartbroken and i i did uh help with that with some of those donations not much obviously because it was so many millions of dollars but uh you know i i i did my my little fair part okay so they said January 25th, 2024 is when the, he'll get the uh, verdict. Okay. Despite reports that the trial of suspected Kyoto animation arsonist Shinji Oba uh, will be concluded this year, today the Kyoto District Court announced that his verdict will be delivered on January 25th, 2024, ending the trial that has been going on since the attack in July 2019. Along with the verdict date, the court revealed that Elba will face court for the first time on September 5th after going through two rounds of psych evaluations to see if he was fit to stand trial since being arrested in May 2020. One of the prosecutor's side... Uh, one from the prosecutor's side and another from the defense, with both concluding that the trial can continue. Alba was caught at the scene with heavy burns all over his butt. Okay, yeah, we, we just read all of that. Man, gosh, I, because I, I, there were some headlines earlier this year that were saying that, well, maybe the trial might uh, be, or we knew that the trial was going to be in September, so maybe the verdict would happen, you know, by the end of the year, but it looks like it's going to be in January. Dang. All I got to say, man, is prison for life, bro. I, I mean, I, I don't know everything about the law in Japan, so I, I, I'm viewing this from a very skewed Americanite uh, lens. But um, yeah, bro, for something like that, full life sentence, That that's it. You He took over 30 people with him and then injured another uh, more than 30. Uh, yeah, took the lives of 36 and injured 35 who were injured along with himself. Dude, that is 72 people, 72 people, half died, and then the other half were injured. Like, bro, get this man out of my sight. Goodness gracious. Okay. Well, uh, whenever that trial happens on September 5th, we'll be talking about that, obviously. So, gosh. Oh, great. Even more bad news. Anime game music composer Hidekazu Tanaka handed suspended sentence for being a public nuisance and indecent acts. Tanaka will not serve 18 months in prison if he remains on good behavior for three years. What happened? The Tokyo District Court found 35-year-old game and anime composer Hidekazu Tanaka guilty on Friday of violating Tokyo's nuisance or trouble for prevention ordinance and committing indecent acts before handing him a suspension of 18 month prison sentence. If Tanaka remains uh, in good behavior for three years, he will not serve time in prison. Police had arrested Tanaka in Tokyo on October 24th on a charge of attempted forcible indecency, a Japanese legal term which uh, includes sexual assault. Bro! However, the court formally ruled that Tanaka violated a different ordinance. The court also found uh, Tanaka guilty of taking voyeuristic photos up women's skirts 11 times between last September and October at train stations in Tokyo and Kanagawa Prefecture. I mean, if it's 11 times just within like that month, God knows how many other times it, it was before he got caught, as well as indecently exposing his lower body on a train between Japan Railways, Yurikucho, and Tokyo stations. Bro, What? The court noted that the victim of his first offense, a high school girl, and a high school girl. Oh, Jesus, Lord Jesus. When, can you come back sooner? Um, a high school girl ended up not able to go to school for a week after the crime as she is now fearful of interactions with men, people walking behind her, and crowded trains on her school commutes. Uh, the presiding judge concluded with, no, with noting that for the victim, this case will never end. The judge then admonished Tanaka to never forget about the victim and never uh, error like this again. Tanaka had admitted in March to using obscene language to a 15-year-old girl in an attempt to commit acts, acts of obscenity towards her. According to authorities, Tanaka said, I'll give you money so you won't put out uh, uh, for me uh, to a teenage girl and forcibly took her hand at the train station's bicycle parking area in Tokyo's mega reward in last August. In court, Tanaka stated that he liked her face and presence, so he followed her from the train, then tried to commit an obscene act. The girl reported the incident at a nearby neighborhood police outpost. Police then found footage from the station security camera of a person following the girl. Tanaka had also admitted to voyeurism at least dozens of times in the past 10 years since he was in his early 20s. He added in March that he wanted to feel the thrill of wondering whether he would get caught uh, and committed these actions to relieve anger and work stress. Okay, then they talk about a little bit of what he's done. Bro, I don't care about his legacy. No. Why did... Okay, what... 
Okay, I wasn't there for the court case. I, I don't know all the, the reasons for why. Uh, but taking photos up skirts, uh, putting girls, uh, minors in, in uncomfortable situations, um, using obscene language uh, to commit acts towards girls, um, uh, voyeurism, uh, and and following and stalking these people like bro you, no 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 Th- 18 months is too short can we like can we like increase these penalties what's going on here goodness gracious gosh what is wrong with y'all how does i don't understand these types of people how do you do that how do you just do that and he's like yeah bro i did it for the thrill of it like i i was like i the thrill and the excitement of I might get caught was exciting for me, bro. Shut up, dear. How, how did they let this man go? How were they like, yeah, just be a good boy and and we'll, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe in like three years, we'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll pretend none of this happened. No, bro. No, bro. Goodness gracious. My anime list return. Oh, I, I, I saw this happen because I was, I was like on my anime list over the weekend and I was trying to, to get stuff. I was trying to, you know, do stuff for the season and it was like not working. And I was like, um, okay. Uh, so yeah. Okay. So what exactly happened two days after a hack that caused emergency maintenance? Uh, my anime list announced that it'll be back. Okay. It came back. Uh, a malicious individual overwrote anime database information to modify all tiles, titles to let's all love lane. User scores were also tampered with. Additionally, a Java alert, a uh, JavaScript alert was inserted to display a pop-up to users who visited uh, their profile or list during the attack. Our website apps and APIs were put into uh, emergency maintenance as soon as the attack was discovered. To protect our community, we cannot restore the website until we are fully confident that all hacking methods used by the attacker have been identified and resolved. My analyst, okay, yeah. Wow, how did that happen? <laughs> Uh, I wish I got to see it before it happened because all I saw was I, I I opened up my anime list. What was it like Friday, like Thursday or Friday last week? And the website was just down. And I'm like, yo, where can I can I use the website? Like this is the number one like anime like search engine on the planet, please. Can I like have my anime database and all my information? And they were like, uh, no, the website's down. And I was like, OK, let me come back in like a few hours. Still down. This makes a lot more sense. Obviously, I missed the the Let's All Love Lane part uh, where everything got hacked. I thought they were just doing like a super big maintenance thing, but um, that makes a lot more sense. That sheds a lot more light. And honestly, it's kind of funny. Roni Kenshin gets new trailer. Ah, oh, I forgot about this reboot that they're doing. Yeah. Okay. So if y'all don't know what, uh, okay. If y'all don't know what a uh, Roni Kenshin is, a uh, Roni Kenshin is a samurai anime about this guy, uh, Roroni Kenshin. Um, I've not seen it, but I've heard quite a bit about it. A lot of people love the original and it looks like it's finally getting a reboot. I don't know how old the original. Yeah. Okay. So the manga was 1994 to 1999. Uh, and then the anime adaptation was 1996 to 1999. Okay. Yeah. So you know what? It, it might be time. Hopefully, uh, this is a solid adaptation and kind of like, um, what they did with, uh, what's it called? Um, Trigun, like like that new Trigun adaptation was pretty solid. Hopefully this is something like that and it's not some like really abridged bullcrap reboot where they change a bunch of stuff like Promised Neverland. And I think we might be in good hands for a really cool uh, summer anime because it's coming out on July. So that's, that's pretty exciting. Did they say how many episodes this is gonna be? Um, is this gonna be a two core anime or a one core? Uh, they have not said. That's interesting. Who's animating this? Um, it will re Takahashi. Re Takahashi's in this. Let's go. Um, Lead in Films is animating the reboot. Oh gosh, I know their name. What do I? Who? Do, what have they done? Hang on, I, I gotta look this up. Oh, Kotoro lives alone. Call of the Night, Tokyo Avengers, Insomniac chapters. Okay, yeah. I have good faith in this. This is going to be awesome. Certified banger incoming. Everybody look out. We got a great animation studio who just kills it in the animation department. Um, we have uh, a, obviously a great source material that a lot of people love. Like this, you know what? 
I'm very excited for this. This looks good. Wow. All right. Count me interested. Atelier Riza as well. Okay, got another trailer. So this is this is one of those that I, I talked about a few weeks ago. What's the animation look like? The official animation? Because before it was like a really small teaser. I want to see like what this looks like looks like. Doesn't look too bad. Who's animating this? This is who is animating this? Oh, okay, it's Leiden Films again. Bro, Leiden Films finna kill it? Oh, and this is also in July. Oh, bro, Leiden Films finna take over. Well, no, they're not, because it's Jujutsu Kaisen and Bleach as well. Okay, so they're not gonna take over, but they're gonna put up a strong fight, bro, with all these bangers they're finna drop. Oh, man, W for Leiden Films. Former Jujutsu Kaisen manga translator Stefan Koza sentenced to 10 years in jail with seven years of sentence suspended. Uh, Koza is still to serve three years in jail for a guilty verdict of eight accounts of child porn. Didn't I just say like 10 minutes ago, like to just chill out everybody? Child porn. Okay, hang on. Let me let me read this. Let me. Let me read this. Yes, content warning, okay? Now I already said, I already said what it is, but okay, you've been warned, terrible time, but okay. The Fairfax County Circuit Court of Virginia announced its sentence on April 28th for former Jujutsu Kaisen manga translator Stephen Koza. On July 14th, Koza was found guilty of eight counts of possession of child pornography. The court sentenced him to 10 years in jail for each of the eight counts to be served currently. Uh, concurrently, uh, so for a total of 10 years, not 80. However, the court also gave Koza a partially suspended sentence for seven years of the sentence on each count. The sentence is suspended for five years. During the five years of the suspended sentence, Koza will be on supervised probation, which will include mental health counseling, da 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 He must ent register himself in the sex offender registry for the state of Virginia. Uh, still serve jail time for the remaining three years of his sentence. Um, but any time he has already spent in jail will be credited toward those three years. Um, eight felony charges. Wow. And he was arrested on December 20th. Dang. So he was already arrested for a bit. So I wonder how much of that of, of his thing is going to get taken off. Dude, people suck, bro. What are y'all doing? So we have this, we have the arson thing. I mean, that was a few years, but they... A few years ago, but they brought it back into my memory. So we have the Kyoto Ar arson thing where dude kills 36 people, injures 36, including himself. We have the, uh, what, what was it? It was the composer who was just doing obscene acts and and putting uh, underage girls in very uh, uncomfortable and very bad and inappropriate situations. He was following them. He was stripping and revealing lewd parts of himself. And then now we have the former Jujutsu Kaisen manga translator found with eight counts of child pornography. I'm I'm trying to be a calmer person, but uh, it's stuff like this that makes it a lot harder. Um, wow. What the heck, dude? How do you, how do you do, how do you decide to be served concurrently? Okay, Virginia, come here. <laughs> Virginia, <laughs> come on. Why are we giving these people like the easiest sentences in the world? Like, dude, dude is a menace. If he's watching it, in my opinion, it's only a matter of time before he starts like trying to partake in something. Bro is a, a threat and a menace. Like, can we, can we get this guy off of our streets and neighborhoods, please? And away from the kids? Can we, can we like not take away the 80 years and put those back? Goodness gracious. What a freaking week, dude. All right, please give me some good news. The One Punch Man webcomic returns after two year hiatus. Good news, thank you. Okay, the original One Punch Man webcomic from Creator One is finally back with its first chapter since 2021, shocking readers who presumed it had ended. Um, after nearly two years absence, during which many readers uh, assumed its run was over, the One Punch Man webcomic has returned from the dead with an all new chapter. Chapter 142 dropped out of nowhere earlier today, reuniting fans with Saitama and uh, Genos in series creator, one's distinctive art style. The chapters is currently only available uh, in its original Japanese, but it is likely that just a matter of time before English language translators become available um, 
uh, online. And while uh, the new chapter is a delightful surprise to fans, just as exciting to be continued note on its final panel, reassuring its readers that it is not a one-off comeback for the webcomic, but will be a more permanent return. I wonder if, so So if you guys don't know, the author of One Punch Man, and also if you haven't seen or read One Punch Man, what the heck are you doing with your life? So the so the author of One Punch Man, one, is also the author of uh, Mob Psycho 100. Um, and and that is a freaking amazing anime. Uh, I, I thought season three was, I, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. I thought season three was pretty disappointing. And I, 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 I'm sad that that was the final season only because it now put like the rest of the show kind of in a, it, it, I left with a bad taste in my mouth, I'll just say. But this makes me think that maybe be, maybe he was so focused and involved with the anime adaptation of Mob Psycho, which is why that anime adaptation was so good. Um, and he's also been so involved in the pre-production of One Punch Man Season 3, I think it is, that Mop is doing later this year, that maybe he finally found some free time or he was just waiting for the right time uh, to be like, yo, boom, it's not over, boys. Like, this is amazing to me. Man, well, I know what I'm doing later this week. Oh, man, that's exciting. World's End Harm Fantasia manga goes on high. Bro, do they have like a cinematic manga universe of World's End Harm? I have to look this up because I, I thought the original World's End Harm was over. Then like last week or the week before, we talked about a spinoff manga going on like hiatus or something. And now this one's going on hiatus. Okay, so World's End Harm Fantasia. Okay, hang on. So, so we have World's End Harm right here, the OG. Then we have other Fantasia. And then Fantasia has a spinoff, which is Fantasia Academy. And then if we go back to the main story, there's another spinoff not related to Fantasia, which is Worlds in Harem Britannia Lumiere. I did not know that this was like the Marvel cinematic Worlds in Harem universe, bro. What the heck? What is going on? How are they making up this? What is this, an isekai version? <laughs> what? I have to make a video about this. I have to like read all of Worlds and Harem, every version of it, and then just like do like a two hour like diatribe into it. This is amazing. I can we get another another spit off, please, that I won't read just so I can be like, yo, bro. Yeah, there's like five manga about Worlds and Harem. Yeah, I know, dude. Oh, my gosh, that's hilarious. The first slam dunk passes 14 billion yen. No signs of slowing down. Now, in its sixth month of screenings in Japan, the first slam dunk is not even breaking a sweat, sitting very comfortably in the top 10 again this weekend for the 25th week in a row. Uh, and with this previous weekend, the first slam dunk passed 14 billion yen at the Japanese box. That was the, the 16th film ever to do so. 16th film period, not even just anime. As of May 14th, uh, the first slam dunk has brought in about uh, $107 million in Japan alone and uh, $268 million from around the world, uh, sitting very comfortably at fifth place on the worldwide charts behind Suzume. Suzume ended off, what was it, like 320? Something like that. So yeah, it's probably not going to touch Suzume, but man, what, dude, this film has had an amazing run. This just makes me so excited to actually see it with how, with how well it's been performing around the world. I'm so excited to see this. New Naruto manga announces summer release window. Uh, Naruto fans will get to read the series next installment this summer. As detailed on Crunchyroll, Masashi Kishimoto's upcoming one-shot manga starring Minato, the winner of the Naruto P99 character poll, will launch in a summer issue of the weekly Shonen Jump. According to Kishimoto, the manga's plot focuses on the secret be uh, story behind the development of Minato's technique. The official Naruto and Boruto Twitter accounts featured promotional art highlighting Minato's victory. Oh, snap. Man, okay, so as someone who has not read Naruto, they, they just keep giving me reasons to get into it. Like, the anime's coming back for like four episodes, I think it is, later this year. Um, now the manga's doing more stuff. Dude, I, I, maybe, maybe I'm gonna get into Naruto. Maybe, maybe I have to. Maybe I have no choice. Psychopaths Providence make a fourth place debut. Oh yeah, I read about uh, this film coming out. Psychopaths Providence, the latest feature film from production IG Psychopaths anime franchise, which released uh, in 173 theaters across Japan May 12th uh, and raked in uh, fourth in its opening weekend with an estimated three-day gross of 150 million yen, a 1.1 million USD. Wait, it made 1 million from 173 theaters? 
in one country? Dude, that is fantastic. That's amazing. That, that's what is that per theater average? I wonder, bro. That's a 6,000 per theater average. That's fantastic. Holy cow. The film also received critical acclaim from audience surveys and ranked number one on Film Mark's first day satisfying ranking with an average ranking rating of um, 4.2 out of 5 based on 791 reviews. I haven't gotten into Psychopaths just because there's so much of it. So, Psychopaths has. They have the original series, which is one of the most popular anime of all time. And a lot of people will have it in like their favorite animes as well. Then you go to the sequel, uh, which is Psychopath Season 2. Then there's a Psychopath movie. Then there's a Psychopath uh, one-off thing. That's like an hour. Then there's a Psychopath sequel to that, which is another hour. Then there's another one that's an hour. And then there's Psychopath season three. And then there's Psychopath season three, First Inspector, which is another show. Uh, with, and then there's the movie. Like, bro, I don't, I, I don't have the time. Um, so maybe I could read the, um, the manga. Um, I don't know. Or maybe maybe all this stuff is like not necessary. Maybe you only need to see like the first season and all this is like like about different characters but in the same universe. I don't know. I'll have to look into it. Obviously, it's been very highly regarded. It's one of the most popular anime of all time. Uh, I might just have to check this out. And this sounds good. Uh, looks like the movie's doing very, very well. I wonder if it's going to get a much wider release in Japan. Um, and who knows? Maybe, maybe that is a wide release in Japan. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how many theaters are in Japan. Nearly 100% of Japanese artists are concerned about AI's impact on their livelihood. Yeah. A recent survey finds that a huge percentage of Japanese creators worry about AI's growing presence in art and entertainment. Japanese artists share unanimous concerns about AI and its impact on their livelihoods. Initially reported by Anime News Network, a recent Arts Workers Japan Association survey about, of about 25,000 artists found that roughly 94% of Japanese creators are concerned um, that AI could have harmful effects such as rights infringement. Some participants also reported negative incidents related to AI. These included cases when AI stole their art and reposted it on foreign websites or when AI stole published voice samples available on the web, altered them, and resold them. Uh, AI artwork is notorious for being derivative of existing works. Uh, when Shinchosha published the first AI-generated manga, cyberpunk Peach John readers quickly noticed its stylistic resemblance to Sui Ishida's Tokyo Ghoul. Cases of this has become so prominent that the Japanese artists have started demanding protective laws against AI. One group consisting of 30 illustrators across the country explicitly formed to protest uh, the lack of protection from AI services like Mimic, which allow users to upload and receive AI-generated art that replicates existing works. Let me look at this cyberpunk peach, John. I've never heard of this. Oh, I have. Is that what this artwork is? And it looks, and they, they thought it looked like the Tokyo Ghoul art. Bro, you should have been able to, like, I don't want to be that guy, but like, bro, you couldn't tell that this was AI-generated? Like, what? Okay, so the Tokyo Ghoul manga instead. Sure, I guess some of the panels, maybe. But yeah, no, this this looks like a manga. This is manga. Unless I'm, yeah, no, this is Tokyo Ghoul. I mean, I see, I guess I see a stylistic resemblance, but you can clearly tell when one is AI and one's not. I thought it was gonna look like as if it was drawn by the people who drew Tokyo Ghoul. But still, this is, this is we've been talking about it for weeks, if not months by now. It's happening. It's crazy. Uh, and in Japan, it is moving fast. And so hopefully we stand with, I mean, I hope you guys stand with them, but we stand with the artists. Um, they should not be in a position where um, their talent and their hard work can just be replicated by a computer algorithm and sold for profit. Um, that stuff is just disgusting. And I hope that uh, they really get a hold on this because I'm tired of seeing these headlines uh, of people saying, oh, yeah, we don't want to do or we don't want to use it. And then they do nothing about it. Not to say that like they're not trying to do anything about it, but just that the studios aren't buckling. And I, I, I need these studios to buckle and to promise that they'll, they'll that they'll do the right thing. Come on now. Takara Tomi confirms Beyblade X TV series for this fall. Yes! Yes! Toys for the fourth generation of Beyblade will debut on July 15th. Takara Tomi confirmed on Monday that its Beyblade X project will have a television anime that will premiere on TV Tokyo. This fall, Takara Tomi announced that the Beyblade X production in March. Takara Tomi uh, describes the project as the fourth generation after the original 1999 Beyblade 
uh, or Bakuten shoot Beyblade. A 2008 uh, Beyblade Metal Fusion or Metal Fight Beyblade, the best series on Beyblade. Fantastic. And 2015 Beyblade Burst, toys for the franchise will debut on July 15th. The June issue of Shogakukan's, uh, okay, I don't care about that. Do they have a synopsis? The manga story centers on a young boy who aims to be a professional Beyblade player. He aims to get to the X Tower. Uh, professional Beyblade players gather. The manga will introduce new gears and abilities. I'm playing Beyblade. So I've, I'm, because I'm a loser, and obviously you guys know this, uh, I have already like seen some of the Beyblades that they're going to do. Like there's a little Beyblade in that poster right there. I've already seen that Beyblade. Um, and it looks great. It looks like they're doing like a mix of the, of, of like all three generations that came before it. They're doing a little bit of a burst. Uh, they're kind of going back to the metal. So like metal fusion and then almost like the style of the OG Beyblades. And so it looks like they're mixing them all which, you know, then I asked the question, is this a new, like, is this a reboot or is this building off of something? Uh, like, does this take place in the future of one of the previous series? I think that's really interesting. But in case you guys didn't know, let me grab it real quick. I am a huge Beyblade simp and Beyblade fan. This is just one of my four cases that I have. And so I have, this is all the metal series. Uh, so there's uh, Hell Kerbex. There's... Uh, is this, um, ah, oh, this is El Drago from season three. What is this one? Uh, oh gosh, it's going to kill me. But anyways, I have, uh, uh, has it been that long? Am I forgetting these Beyblade names? All right, this is Bahamut, uh, Samurai Pegasus right there. Uh, Leon, uh, Big Bang Pegasus, uh, Dragoon, uh, Flame, no, what is this one? This is the Sagittarius from season three. There's so many Beyblades in here. And then one of my favorites, obviously, Twisted Tempo Baby. Oh, such a good show. Uh, I'm not gonna show all my cases because I don't have time for that, but, oh man, I'm so excited. Hopefully this is gonna be better than Beyblade Burst, which wasn't bad, but I just, I never got into it like I did the Metal Fusion. I've rewatched Metal Fusion a few times. It's Maybe it's time for another rewatch. It's so good. Go check it out if you haven't. I think they uploaded the entire series on YouTube, actually. You can find it. It's really good. Psycho Pass Providence movie uh, heading to North American screens in July. Hey, we were just talking about this. Uh, so, okay, July 14th uh, with sneak peeks on July 11th and 13th. Well, that's cool. Maybe I'll see it. Maybe I'll check it out. We got a new anime called The, way the Wrong Way to Use Healing Magic TV anime premieres in 20. 24. Uh, the official website accounts for the wrong way. Okay, uh, 2024. I've never heard of this. Uh, who's making this? Oh, they got blue lock people? Shin A animation? Um, it sounded like I said shitty animation. I said Shin A animation. Uh, serious composition. Uh, okay, I mean, it looks nice. Um, I've never heard of this, though. Is this good? Okay, not bad. Not bad. And still ongoing, so they'll have plenty of room to not continue this series like most anime adaptations. But let's look at the trailer. Oh, wow. This looks way nicer than I thought it would. Oh, this is nice. It's got a little mop of shadows up in there. It's also very clean and polished. Wow. I liked that eye. Yeah, this looks fun. I don't know what it's about. What's this about? <laughs> what's the, what's the, uh, 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 the synopsis? Okay. Usato, an ordinary high schooler, happens to run into two fellow students after one rainy day. Suddenly, all three of them are engulfed in a magic circle and transport to, it's a damn isekai. Damn it! No! I don't want an isekai. All the tra all all of that excitement kind of went down the drain right there. There's just one tiny problem. Usato is simply dragged along by accident. On top of that, Usato learns that he's capable of using healing magic, an incredibly rare affinity in this new world. Oh wow, a super rare power? No way. Uh, now Usato must spend his days with the rescue team thugs, struggling uh, through their hellish training regimen, learning the wrong ways to use healing magic. Get ready for an eccentric, otherworldly fantasy filled with comedy and combat. Okay, I shouldn't have read the synopsis because it was looking up kind of fun before that. I mean, I guess 
looking at the trailer now, I should have assumed because they start like in this like modern day, like see a building there. And then I probably should have thought about it, but I didn't think about it. And so I wouldn't have thought about it until I watched it. But now I, I just had to read the synopsis and now I'm not super excited for it anymore. But uh, it still looks like it's going to be handled really well. So there's a chance I might still watch it. But uh, when is this coming out? 2024? Is this a winter? I assume this is winter uh, because they're announcing it now. Uh, they don't say? Okay, I'm just going to assume that it's winter. Okay, well, another anime on my uh, radar. Creed 3 film gets special anime for Japanese screening. My Megalobox screen. Are we going to get it? Like, I don't care about this. When do we get it? Uh, Do we? When do, when do we get to see it? Or they're probably going to wait till it opens. When does it open? On May 26th? Uh, I'll have to wait, but that's going to be fantastic. This might be like a first look at, um, at, um, at, at, at that anime that they were talking about doing. So I'm excited for that. All right. It looks like that's it for the news. So let's, okay. So let's take a look at this week's figures. Ooh, they're going to have an eye figure. <gasps> Ooh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 13, Death and Manish Boy. Ooh, that's nice. I like the flowy. Ooh, Arena of Valor, Daiji, Beyond the Time, version 1.7 scale figure. What is this? How much is this going for? 209, bro? Bro, well, how is it going for so cheap? Look at all that detail. Look at the stand she's on. Look at like it's transparent. Look at how reflective and shiny she is. How are they selling it for that price? What a steal. What a bargain. But look at how the light's reflecting this thing. What the? Is the honor of King's... Daiji King Q nine tailed fox version, dude. Again, how are they? Okay, well this one's closer to three hundred actually. But I was about to say, how are they able to do this? Yeah, look at that. She got like a little light. There's flowers. She got whatever that is dripping off. Is that like part of her cape, dude? And what are these clouds of smoke or something, dude? Fantastic figure, dude. Oh, they got new rim and ram figures. Oh snap. Rem is now her own, well, not now, but she's always been her own brand, and they got a Ram one to match. That's cute. I prefer Ram, but uh, I know, I know Rem is the one that, you know, she's the one that made ReZero a, a freaking household anime name. Jinji Ito Slug Girl. Whoa. Well, that's so disgusting. But I kind of want it. Like, bro, this is so gross that, like, bro. And it's only 77? I feel like that's glass though. That looks like glass. I might be wrong. Uh, I don't know. Looks cool. Uh, figure Arts Zero Nar Figure Arts Zero Naruto Shippuden Kakashi Hatake Suzanne Nu. Ooh. Okay. He looks cool, but bro. Look at this behind him. What? They're, they're selling this for 77? That's a steal right there. Oh, and there she is, the eye figure. And yeah, she looks great. Yeah, super good. The skirt, all the little confetti on it. Does she come with the stand? <gasps> oh, that's so cool. Oh, she comes with a little pop star stand. Uh, too bad it's 160, bro. Like, I mean, I think they're, I think they're kind of milking this one. Like, I've seen a lot of anime figures. This one, to me, other than the hair, I'm like, bro, come on now. That's a $30 figure. But they're they're really trying to cash off on this name of Oshino Cohen. I think I think it'll drop. I think we'll see it drop. Lucrea Uma Musume, Pretty Derby, uh, Sakura Bakushin. Bro, she is running. Look at her hair. Oh, that's awesome. That's a very lively figure. Oh, and she got a little thing of grass, too. Oh, that's awesome. That's 200? Sheesh. Uh, Precious Gem Series, Naruto Shippuden and Naruto Umu Uzumaki, Wind God and Sasuke Uchiha Thunder God set, bro. Look at that. Bro, what? What? Dude, this is fantastic. Bro, how much is this? $601? Yeah, I ain't getting it. I ain't getting it. I could look at it from afar, though. Oh, man, that that is a really nice. So whoever gets that, that's awesome. All right, anime trending time. Okay, these are the top. Okay, here we go. Uh, so Mobile Suit Gundam again, bro. Mobile Suit Gundam must have been killing it because I have not been checking it out. But apparently this is like... Fantastic. I, I haven't been watching it though. I'm not caught up. Uh, okay, then number two, Oceanoko. Two weeks, number two. Uh, Skip and Loafer went up one spot to number three. Tengoku Daimaki went up two spots 
to number four. Hell's Paradise went down two spots to number five. Demon Slayer went up two spots to number six. And Somniacs After School is uh, two weeks to number seven. Uh, Dangerous in My Heart went up one. Uh, at num- at num- uh, to number eight, uh, why Rayliana ended up at the Duke's mansion is a re-entry, and my love story with Yamada Kun sk- plummeted to five spots. Dang, was like everything else amazing, or was it just that bad of an episode? Oh my gosh! All right, looking at the anime corner one, we have uh, Oshinoko uh, is at number one, uh, went up one spot from rank number two. Demon Slayer went down one spot to rank number two. Uh, Roshinoko got 7.75% of the vote. Demon Slayer got 7.39% of the vote. Wow, this really shows the dichotomy between the two things because Yamada Kun dropped five spots to number 10 on Anime Trending. And over here on Anime Corner, it went up three spots to number six. (laughs) And it got 7.31% of the vote. Uh, uh, Number four was Hell's Paradise at the same rank. It got 5.7% of the vote. Uh, Villain Saga dropped two spots to number five, got 5.5% of the vote. Kamikatsu, working for a god in a godless world, went down one spot to number six and got 5.05% of the vote. The Ancient Magus Bride season two went up three spots from number 10 and got uh, at number seven and got 4.66% of the vote. The Dangers of My Heart went up eight spots from rank 16 to number eight at 4.03% of the vote. Insomniacs after school, dang. Bro, they have so many just popping in here. Went up uh, 11 spots from rank 20 uh, to, to number nine and got 3.97% of the vote. Uh, Tengoku Daimakyo went up uh, five spots uh, from rank 15 to rank 10 and got 3.24% of the vote. That is crazy, the dichotomy between those two lists. That is so interesting. Wow. What a crazy week of anime news, bro. Like we we covered everything, everything. Usually it's like one thing, not enough. This time, everything. Well, anyways, guys, thanks for watching this episode of the Otaku Experience. If you would like to see more stuff on the Burnett Network, we have new content every day on this channel, including Rob observations, ladies of the PGS, K Pasta PGS, the members only chats, the the Otaku Experience like you're watching right now, Lana Ewan's Burnett Network reviews, uh, Architects of Imagination. Um, Let's get physical media, midnight musings, and I'm sure there's 30 other shows that I'm blanking on at the moment. But there's a lot. There's a lot here. We got some great hosts. We got some great content for you guys covering all different sides of the pop culture. Zeitgeist, Geist, Geist, not Geist, Israel, Geist. If you want to follow me more, you can check out my main channel, King Tannic. Um, or you can follow me on Instagram at King Tannic or follow me on Twitter at King Tannic Israel. I'm a lot more active on Twitter, but uh, I, sometimes I post a picture on Instagram. Who, who knows? Who knows what you might get? And uh, yeah, thanks for letting me experiment with a new way of doing this uh, show. Uh, I'm just trying to find the most fun way for me while it's also still entertaining and helpful for you guys. Um, and uh, I don't know. This, this was really fun for me to do it like this rather than try to do something that I usually feel unqualified to do, which is that new style thing. But uh, this, this is a lot more fun. Uh, it felt a lot more like raw and real rather than like me going through the stories and like preparing my opinion, things like that. Uh, I don't know. This, is, this just feels a lot more fun. It feels like something I'm a lot more qualified to do. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. With that being said, guys, I will see you guys next week.